guys, welcome back to the channel today. As you can see behind me, we have a 2007 Mazda RX-8, a car that you can pretty much buy, obviously with a broken engine, for around 350 pounds these days. A good one, like the one I have behind me, will set you back around 1,000, 1,500 pounds. Now that's obviously very dependent on how good this car is, but today I've picked this one up from one of my friends that has just bought it, and I'm really intrigued to see what they're actually like. Of course, plastered all over the internet or from your friends, these are deemed as a very unreliable car. But today I want to go through the motions and explain why I think this is actually quite a good car. Why you should buy one, we'll go through costs, performance, go and enjoy, ourselves and have a full walkthrough as ever guys if you want to support the channel i am currently wearing the blue camo hoodie by fyd apparel my personal brand please go and support it there is a link in the description please make sure you subscribe give this video a like but let's get on with the video now we are going to start with the most controversial part of the rx8 the deemed to be unreliable 1.3 liter <clears throat> wankle engine but the reality of this engine is if you like your cars and you like servicing your cars especially this is right up your street let's say every 6,000 miles I'd say you have to service one of these some of the more enthusiastic people that own the RX-8 will actually tell you to service these within 3,000 miles of services which is uh, understandable a rotary engine loves its oil so something to note that you have to put a lot of oil in these things and service them a lot and if you are after one 60,000 miles is the cap I would say for these engines yes they can go a little bit more than that but if you are after buying one I think anything under 60,000 miles is a win this one is on 40,000 miles which is pretty much the one to buy with a good service history anything over 60 you'll be looking at an engine rebuild but if it has had an engine rebuild and it's over 60,000 miles I would definitely go for it and the next thing is the styling I personally absolutely love the styling of the rx8 you see these front bits here they remind me of an s2000 and I know that sounds really weird but once you're in the car and you can actually see the swoop of the front of it, it looks very cool another thing to point out is there's a large amount of rotary symbols in this car one of them being very prominent on the bonnet which to be honest i didn't even notice until i actually picked this car up sat in the driver's seat and noticed that there is a huge rotary symbol on the bonnet coming up to the front of the car especially on this one you've got xenon headlights lovely swooping lines at the front number plate off to one side which opens up this grill section which makes again the rx8 look just a little bit more sports car in my opinion now the inside of the rx8 very interesting place to be because it feels like a sports car but there is a sense of luxury in here which i wasn't expecting when i picked this car up i thought it's going to be relatively basic inside but it's not you have a bose sound system in this one a full leather interior which is incredibly comfortable so there is a lot of money that's been spent on the inside of this car although one thing to point out i have of course large shoes on as usual and the tunnel itself down here is incredibly intrusive into the driver and passenger foot well you wouldn't usually notice this i don't think but i'm incredibly used to cars with smaller tunnels in them so this one has intrusive tunnel to your left foot but it does actually mean you can lean your leg on it which is an interesting feeling because i don't think you get that from many cars you can actually lean your leg on the tunnel and it becomes quite comfortable other thing to point out rotary symbol on the gear knob exciting my slight beef though i must admit with this interior is the smallest thing you could probably pick out in this car and it's the handbrake it goes underneath and like there'll be someone in the comment section like oh that's so silly but like i just don't get it like i don't get why this is underneath it's, it's just a strange thing but were they trying to get a rotary symbol in there i'm not sure let's put the uh down and like i don't understand where where is this what is it protecting? I'm sure there's a valid explanation behind it, but I don't understand it. Other cool things though, heated seats, good start. Love a heated seat in a car. Very big tunnel means fantastic armrest, which is always a good shout. Two cup holders at the front, and you actually have, if we go to the back, we have, as you can see, suicide doors. How exciting is that? I've pulled the seat right forward. And accessibility, fantastic, full grown, adult sort of in here and loads of space knee space arm space and if we shut the door loads of space thumbs up now as we open the door again cup holders in the rear always a good shout large tunnel good shout little pop-out windows 
good shout. But as a sports car, there's loads of space in these things. If you were to get four people, four adults say, in one of these, very versatile. And you can get easily in and out because there's no pillar here. Think about that. It just means you can get your mates in and out easily when you want to go somewhere. The other thing though, to point out, all of that suicide doorness and no pillar in the center of the car means, you want to shut the front door? You can't. You can't shut the front door without shutting the back door. And if you went to shut the back door, you're going to have a dent on your hands. Apart from actually pointing out the quite obvious about the rear doors, the front door, very, very cool idea that Mazda came up with there to put that on a sports car. I do actually, you know, big shout out to Mazda for actually doing that. Rear end though, let's go round to the rear end. It has some pretty cool styling cues, I would say. Very sporty rear end, twin exit exhaust system. This actually has a Toyo Sports exhaust system. So, if you were to get one of these, first thing you do, unrestrict that exhaust because they sound fantastic with an exhaust system. Rear light, reminiscent of the Lexus lights. Shout out Lexus lights. Nice little spoiler as well. If we come down to here, another little rotary sign in the fog light. But that's enough of me waffling on about this thing. Let's shut these funky doors, go and see what this thing is like because the drive is why you would buy one of these. So let's get on the road. Noises in the morning. Now driving this car is the pinnacle of this car, I think. It's slightly luxurious inside. I've already been through that. The seats are phenomenal. The rotary engine, yes, I understand. There's a lot of people. There'll be people in the comments section that wouldn't touch this car with a barge pole, and I understand and I get it. But if you're into rotaries and you're about that rotary life, for 1,500 pounds, say, which this one is actually up for sale for, it is one hell of a bargain if you want to put the work in for it. Driving it is the prize. Yes, I understand that the servicing is slightly expensive. Insurance isn't too bad. You'll be paying around 500 quid, say. If you're 25, yes, it's gonna be a lot more. If younger than that, or if you've stolen a car, whatever's happened. And I do try and touch on insurance, but these aren't crazy to insure. They're not silly money. So that's quite a bonus, really, considering that you have to put services on these and oil in them and blah blah and i get that that is the pinnacle talking point of this car but let me gloss straight past that i've been through it in this video let's get on to the drive now the driving position is actually a really really good place to be i am going to hark back to the s2000 again it, there's something about it it feels like an s2000 in here the dash layout isn't like that though it's very modern it's very comfortable it's pretty quiet in here as well it's quite a modest setting for a sports car you do have a swooping bonnet with big swooping lines over the front wheels which i really am a fan of it tucks in incredibly well for the front end and you have to rev it seven and a half thousand rpm the red line actually starts coming in you'll hear beeps in a minute once i get up to the magical 8000 rpm rev limit it does clock right round incredibly well this car but it beeps when it wants you to start changing gear there it is <laughs> and that's quite a cool thing you know letting you know that you need to change gear it is based around the drive this car though i think if you've driven one before you'll get it I think it's a very nimble car. It's not too big as well. From the outside, I think the bulge lines, especially around the wheel wells, do give it a sense of thickness and bigness. But inside, you don't get that. You get sort of a nimble feel from a smaller car. And although you can get four people in this incredibly comfortable, it doesn't feel like that car. It doesn't feel like a coupe sort of suicide door wearing sports thing it actually feels like a good sports car a very poised sports car as well this is again a completely standard one bar and exhaust system 
and that's probably the best way to go with it because you want to make sure you're keeping up with that service and stuff you know if you're on a budget keep the services up you don't need to put silly amounts of you know wheels and tires and suspension on this thing to enjoy it it is incredibly good as a standard car this you know bar and exhaust but the way it revs is so so good it gradually comes up it's not surging boost or anything because obviously these are naturally aspirated but it is incredibly enjoyous to drive this thing you can get 61 out of second gear which is incredibly impressive especially on the b roads you can stick in second and third gear through most of the roads that is a fantastic thing because you're not grabbing the gearbox constantly and because you don't have a lot of low down power in these you're not slipping all over the place worrying about that back end coming out now as we come up to a roundabout one of the things that i want to highlight especially is that if you're going to drive one of these and you are younger the clutch is low and relatively hard as a standard clutch it is quite low in the clutch pedal and it is quite stiff you have to rev this thing so i would say taking off in this isn't really like any other car you have to rev it up to 3000 you know two and a half three thousand rpm to actually get the thing off the clutch and going which if you're not good with your clutches probably a bad thing if you're good with your clutches very good thing you'll learn to drive this though very quickly because once you do start driving it and you start revving it it is a very, very good laugh. The gearbox is nice and tight, incredibly notchy to actually change down, change up into. And it pops and bangs as well with the little uh, Toyo Sports exhaust system that's on this one. When you're driving as well, you can actually pop it like you would on a 106 GTI with a Pug Sport. Me showing my youth there, but it does sound the same way. So if you were to blip the throttle, it actually pops and it comes on and it goes off just like the old school 106s did and i must admit the severity of the power you know how it comes on and how it feels is sort of like that an old school na hot hatch and if you've driven one you'd understand and i think if you've driven one of these you'd sort of get it and i know it's hard to think that an s2000 sort of feels like this and a 106 gti sort of sounds like this it's a very hard thing to put onto video once you drive one, go and test drive one. If you're looking at this video and you want to go and test drive one, please, please go and get a good go in a good one. Make sure it's a good one, but you will get the experience that I'm getting today, which is a very poised sports car with comfy interior heated seats, a poppy exhaust system if you do have an aftermarket exhaust system, and bags of potential potential to drive it not potential to see how much power you can get out of it and stuff but just drivability the excitement of driving this car is really what it's about and that's why you'd spend 1500 pound on a good one of these because you want to go and enjoy it and that's the pinnacle of this review this young drivers entry into the rx8 is the drive i remember going back you know years and years ago and i wanted a good driving car i didn't necessarily want to modify it and this is that car. If you do have £1,500 to go and buy a car and you don't mind chucking a bit of service, oil, all that sort of good stuff into a car and you like maintaining cars, I think this is right up your alley because it is a great driver's car, this thing. And although a lot of people will say not to go near one, I would probably say go for it. For the sake of 1500 quid, it would be a good driver's car It'd be a good bit of fun you, can, you know break away the rear end sometimes if you fancy you could rev the nuts out of it and it would be a good entry into your driving life you know throwing one of these around at a young age it would be right up there with probably one of the best experiences you're going to have as a young driver yes i understand it might break at some point you know buy one that's relatively low mileage or buy one that has an engine rebuild but as a young driver's performance car, for 1,500 quid, it is a banger. Now as ever with my car reviews, I would rather people go over and use this video as an entry into them buying one and then go and do a little bit more fact checking. Definitely go and check out 
things to look out for the engine bay. Yes, I've gone through a few things, but make sure you are buying a good one because I don't want you guys going out there buying a bad one. Fuel consumption, you're looking around 18 mpg with this wankle engine up front, which is completely understandable. It is a highly strung rotary engine. A full tank of petrol will set you back about 65 pounds and that'll get you around 225 miles. So guys, if you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button. And as I tip this lovely piece of Japanese engineering into a corner, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, share and subscribe as usual. Tip it back in second gear, grabbing those gears. And I'll see you all on the next one.